happening. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the state of New Jersey, adequate notice of the Wednesday, February 8th, 2023 remote meeting of the Franklin Township Trails Advisory Committee was posted on the township's website and electronically transmitted to the officially designated newspapers, indicating that this remote meeting would take place via WebEx on Wednesday, February 8th, 2023. All righty. Okay, you want me to do the roll call? All right. Yes, so please. Vanessa Jones. Present. Ann Marie Arlesky. Chuck Martin. Here. Mark Fortin. Here. Jim Kolagowski. Here. <coughs> uh, Christopher Gonda. I see you. And is that all we have? Did I get everybody? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Here, sorry, I was on mute. That's okay. I see you. So John is not here, and uh, let's go. Kramer's not here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. Can we have a motion for the approval of the January? Minutes. I just want to Chuck. I think you uh, omitted me from being present at the meeting. Uh, Jim, I just noticed that because I copied the roll call from one of the current notes. Oh, okay. I just, added, I just added your name. Excellent. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the January minutes with the correction as noted by Mr. Kuligowski. I second. Any any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, everyone was in favor, so there's no abstentions and um, nobody declining. Um, so that's that six eyes. Pardon? That's six I votes. I votes. Thank you. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, do we have anybody in the public, Tara? No, no public present. Okay. Uh, Diana is listening in. So as, as a member, of the, as a member of the public, and she just said she doesn't count. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not true. She definitely counts. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and move into the pathways and trails plan with our 45 minutes on the clock. All righty, so Chuck sent around to everyone um, and I can share them on the screen. Um, he sent around 3 documents uh, that are the updated assets um, pieces of the plan that he's been working on. So, Chuck, do you kind of want to go through that? I can put them on the screen. I'm just getting them all up right now, and you can tell me which one you want to uh, talk about first. If you like, uh, just in summary, I've just been working, trying to uh, finish out details on these. Uh, the uh, uh, the three documents are, uh, first of all, township assets, which uh, we talked about last month. And basically, I believe I've included all of the revisions uh, and uh, editings that uh, you folks gave me in those. Uh, a second document that uh, is just two pages, uh, which is uh, county and state assets that uh, I sort of felt needed to be included in the plan because they represent fairly large chunks of Franklin Township and our trails in some cases connect with those trails. And that is a description of Colonial Park. And the other is a uh, uh, description of the uh, uh, DNR Canal State Park and the six mile, it's six mile run recreation area. As uh, Patricia Kalesser tells me, she'd like to have that called. Uh, I, with respect to the park assets, I did run these by uh, both Patricia Kalesser and uh, uh, Vicki Chirico. Uh, Vicki is the State Parks uh, SHPO Historic Commission staff member. Uh, just so I could make sure they were comfortable with the worded descriptions 
uh, that I had in there, particularly with respect to hunting and uh, 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 in these areas, and also with respect to uh, 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 use of the uh, towpath for uh, our, our hikes, organized hikes and uh, organized events. And uh, it's it's actually a very simple statement. Uh, Patricia seemed quite happy with with this. It uh, it's a, ra a relatively simple description that also show basically shows access points uh, into the towpath, all the different access points in a towpath from the township, and uh, uh, a brief description of hunting practices and hunting uh, uh, in the area. Uh, and uh, the third document is actually one that uh, I got to talking to Jim about uh, uh, when I realized that uh, we really hadn't included anything about our cycling paths and our, our roadside paths, which we've had up for discussion on a number of occasions in the Trails Committee. And uh, uh, I was thinking that uh, maybe we should also include this as part of the trails inventory uh, because, uh, among other things, it connects to our other trails and seems to be uh, might seem to be an important asset that would be up for discussion in, in uh, uh, down the down the road as as we uh, go through trails planning and and so on. Uh, this last document uh, is pretty incomplete. I think I've, I'm sure I have left out uh, roadside pass, uh, but I, th I think I got the major ones and I tried to check with satellite maps and measure their uh, links and distances and connections uh, basically through uh, Google maps and, and township maps and so on. But uh, I have a feeling that uh, I've missed stuff, and as you can see down below these last four, I haven't really uh, uh, given quite as complete a description as I did with the others. So, um, and it's, uh, so I just present this to you in terms of uh, 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 asking the committee how they would feel about including this as part of our trails inventory as well. Okay. Um, I guess let's let's since we're on this topic, do you want to talk about this first about including these in the pathways and trails plan? And if so, are we going to map them with the GPS tools? Like, I guess maybe let's talk about that. Okay. So so far, like the edits, you know, seemed like all the edits were in there, and based on our last meetings, that part. Um, seems good to go and then now there's this addition section and we want to get some input on do we want to include um this new part about the paved trails in the plan what are our thoughts oh i like the pictures you have there too oh and county paths too yeah Even well the road is a pretty pretty extensive bike lanes set of bike lanes in our in our town yeah there uh, is you're right uh but are there, there are other county roads as well. Uh, of course, Middlebush Road is a county road. There's not a bike lane there, though. Uh, are there bike lanes along various parts of Route 27? Um, uh, are there, are there, I don't know. I'm not aware of any Route 27 formal bike lanes. No, there's some neither. wide shoulders in some spots, yeah. but not everywhere. But I wouldn't call them bike lanes. Yeah, they're definitely not yeah. signed as bike lanes. Yeah, the, there is a signed bike lane on, and I think you have it here. I think I let me scroll down again. Uh, five eighteen. Five eighteen is five eighteen is a county right? road. That's the that's the goes out. You know, goes down the uh, past the quarry. Across yeah. now, oh, yeah. uh, that's that's an official. There's a good portion of that that is an official county signed bike lane. That's the only other one I can think of. Yeah, but I, I really like I really like what you've added here. Um, 
I like what you've done with the other segments. I think it's all good. If, if we're going to include some, we might as well include these as well. And I love the fact that you have it that connects with is terrific. That's a really beneficial bit of information there. If, if we're going to show information like this, then telling people what else they can get to from these is is great. And, and that's I'm sure that was a bunch of work. Nice, really nicely done. Yeah, well, actually, it's just something that uh, actually been doing over the last few days, and you know, Diana actually got out of the car, you know, self-contained, uh, looking at these spots because <laughs> you know, I just, I it wasn't clear to me which ones are marked, which ones are there, and I think we we found some new ones uh, that we didn't know about. Uh, Schoolhouse Road and. Uh, um, uh, you know, areas in the north part of the township, which are really under active discussion now by planning uh, and and uh, uh, environmental commission and so on. So, so yeah, uh, the only, the only one I can think of that we missed was five eight would be five eighteen. Five eighteen. Well, go ahead and take a look the, at it. We we call it, what is that called? It's a the name for it is like the Town, old Georgetown Road. Oh, yeah. right. Well, no, no, it's not old Georgetown. That's not five eighteen. Old Georgetown goes off of five eighteen. Yeah, I right. think it's, it's Georgetown, Georgetown Franklin. 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 Yeah. yeah, Georgetown Franklin Turnpike. Yeah, that's right. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Any other people? Um, other 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 thoughts about this addition? How do we want to handle the mapping of it? Do you want, are we going to map oh, here? I want to have a couple other members see if they have if everyone else is on board with it. I think it's a great, I think it's a great idea. It, it's a nice compliment to what we have. And certainly it gives people a clear sense of all, everything that we have to offer. And I, I agree with Mark's comments. I love the, the connecting part mm -hmm. to pull it all together. And I appreciate you. Doing all this, especially when you haven't been feeling that well, and uh, <laughs> actually, it's a fun project. It takes the uh, gives your mind something to do. <laughs> you know? wow. uh, so it's 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 fun. I'm glad to do it. Uh, and you know, if you have uh, any questions that we missed or whatever, just please send me a note. And uh, yeah, I was just um, thinking that it, it is a great addition. And uh, it would look fantastic on a, a map of the overall township because it fills in a lot of the gaps between the traditional trails and paths that we were thinking of before. Um, so my only question is um, a few of these roadway paths, where, who, how are they maintained? Say if it snows, or is that something that the township maintains for snow if they're if they're detached like the one on van cleef or on jfk i believe they're not they're not treated in any way i don't believe but if you know like they're a county bike lane like on cedar grove where it's not right. separated from the road then it's plowed like the rest of the road but it often winds up being the place where uh the edge of the plow accumulates stuff along the side so it ends up being a pile yeah, it's really, it's not like if you see the picture there of Van Cleef that's on the screen now, where it's sort of, it's got that grass buffer between the actual road and the path. I'm 99% sure the town does not come out and plow the path. It's left as yeah. is untreated. Right. Yeah. That's I true. have seen the JFK Boulevard path um, plowed at some points, but I, I wasn't sure what, what that depended on. Um, but my, the reason I bring that up is because, you know, if people had issues with these trails or had concerns, would it come to <laughs> us, the trails committee, to voice those concerns? Or is there another department that they should be, um, that should be mentioned in the document saying, you know, go straight to uh, public works or something is if something, uh, if they had any concerns with these uh, paths. So, I would, I would think this would be a great thing for Tara, if you could get clarification in your regular meetings with D the guy from DPW, yeah, um, just to clarify what they do or do not are what they ex think they do or do not do in terms of responsibilities during snow. Because I wasn't aware. I mean, I, I cannot recall that 
maybe they treat the JFK one like a sidewalk, maybe, but they don't normally plow everybody's or shovel everybody's sidewalks in town. No, and JFK yeah, usually, is a county road too, I think, isn't it? I don't know about JFK. I believe it's township. Um, let me look. I think it's, I feel like it's county, but you know, let me double check. Yeah. I think it just be, our... we could just, whoever it is, if it's whatever the township roads are, it'd be good. Because I, I, even if it's county, is it a county bike path if it's detached? Uh, if it, well, that depends. That it could be. I, I it don't know if be, it is. Yeah. So it's a question of what they think they have that's what they think maybe they're not aware of which ones are ours <laughs> or, right. or county versus town. And if so, what, what do they believe that their responsibilities are? Like, because I don't know what their purvey or their scope is. Maybe they've been told to to plow them or not plow them or treat them or not treat them with salt or things like that. Um, yeah, I can definitely get clarification on that for sure. I didn't think they did. I was pretty sure they didn't do sidewalks because I was, again, 99% sure that the responsibility of sidewalks is the adjacent property. home properties, right? Residential properties. Right. Or other properties, like some commercial places go ahead and take care of the sidewalks if they have adjoining sidewalks. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know what, it, I don't know what the responsibility, I thought the responsibilities were residences. It was the homeowners. And that's why a lot of homeowners don't like sidewalks near their houses. You're right. Yeah, no, the sidewalks are definitely the, the residential, the residents, um, the residential person's responsibility. The question about the trails, um, if they're detached or if they're not, do they get treated? I'm not sure if it depends on what the surface type is or if it's simply if it's detached. I'm not sure, but that is a good question to find out because Carl will know that right off the top of his head. So I will ask him that uh, we're meeting on Monday. So I'll ask, uh, Tuesday, I'm sorry. So I'll ask him then. It's, it's a great question, Chris. Okay. Um, I, something that, that I'm I'm thinking, um, just like looking at that 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 list and even all the other descriptions, um, you know, the reality is 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 a lot of people aren't going to be looking in the PTP <laughs> nearly as often as we would hope they would, but this would be really I'm trying to think of how where else we could post this information. Like, um, just having it, you know, having it available in its own link, maybe on, on the, on the web, on our township website, um, on the trail section, or I know at 1 point we had, you know, adding, adding, um, our trails into like, um, like, where did we add the trails where we all kind of entered our own trail? Was that. What app was it? That wasn't like all trails, but it was more like, um. From who remembers where we entered our trails in, like as like destinations to visit. Uh, I'm not that I'm not sure about. Remember what I'm talking about? I might have. <laughs> was it before what? I was here? It might have been. Was was that when we were thinking about appealing to a wider audience and we were we, thinking about different trail groups or something I'm, i think I'm it was like to a tour it was like a tourism thing it was like um yeah. it's a, it was a, it's a common app and i'm not remembering the name but anyway anyway like just thinking about like where we could post this like like mark was pointing out like though having those connectors in there is really helpful so i, I think that we have this information when then maybe the next thing for us to consider is where else to share it and post it so it's um, more easily accessible and, um, and valuable. That's a good, yeah, that makes sense. I'm just looking at the bike and hike and walk. What was it? What is this called? I always get this backwards. I think it's walk bike. Oh, walk bike and hike plan. Cause I thought that the county had a map that showed the roadway trails, but I'm not sure now they have trails, shared paths, bike lanes. Okay. So I guess this is kind of it. But I mean, this is now from, I gotta see what date this is from, but they do have this map too. It doesn't, I mean, I don't know if it really helps us that much at this point. Um, I wonder if they have like text that says like by municipality or something. What's this? Bicycle level of traffic stress. Okay. 
Um, I'll have to look through and see. I thought maybe they might have like a listing by uh, township. Hmm. Because there might be something in here we could use, you know? Oh, that's it. Okay. All right. I'll keep looking. But yeah, I think it, we could have a link on our website that's specific for roadway trails. We could definitely put a separate link and map up for that. Okay. All right. So, Tara, what were you saying? So, the next thing you're talking about how we're going to map it? Is that what you wanted to talk about next? Well, I guess I, if we're definitely going, oh, this is probably what I want. If we um, are going to for sure um, put it in the plan, or do you want to have it mapped like with our GPS to make it like, consistent with our GPS mapping? Or should we see if we can just like put a map like this that the county has already developed into the plan? I just kind of want to see what you guys thought about that. Oh, here we go. On street bicycle facilities. That's not what I want. Um, so that's kind of what I was thinking out loud. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Tara, could you say that one more time? Um, or if we're going to include it in the plan, which it sounds like we are, the separate section for roadway yes. trails. Yes. Do we want to map that using our GPS app that we've been using to create maps like for the roadway trails as well? Okay. Or, or, or insert a different map you were saying. Yeah, something like, you know, um, like this, but this, this is a little outdated at this point, so I'm wondering, and there's not one just for Franklin, so I'm wondering if we're going to have to make that map anyway. Oh, can you slow down for a second? Can you go back so it's in our view? Yeah. No, you had that. Could you zoom back into the Franklin part? You were like perfectly zoomed in. How's that? So some of the things that Chuck just mentioned are not on here. Is that what you're saying? Um, well, let's see. So the well, I gotta scroll down for one sec because I just gotta see what this means on the legend. Pedestrian trail on street bicycle facilities. Okay, so on that's yellow. So on street six nine, what's six nineteen? County route six nineteen is, is that Demont Lane. Uh yeah, I think oh. it is. Yeah, or, that must be. Or no, it might be. Or it might be JFK. I don't know. It might be, might be Middle Bush Road. Yeah, I think Middle Bush Road connecting to Demont. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to go back and look, but I don't. Six nineteen looks feet. like Cedar Grove. Cedar Grove. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. There you okay. go. There you go. I was. I was trying to. I didn't say anything at first because I was trying to orient myself on the map as I'm yeah. looking at it to figure out what the heck it is. But yeah, based on that, it's Cedar Grove. So, for example, so one thing that's definitely not on this is the Van Cleef um, Trail that the township is extending or is in the process of extending. Um, I don't well, think. Well, actually, actually, it is. Isn't it that green line at the end of six nineteen? The green line at the end of six nineteen. Oh, I guess that's, technically it that's is. That's the Van Cleef bike path. Yeah. And it shows that it ends abruptly and doesn't get all the way to Blackwell's Mills and the there's that gap. Right. Hmm. So it shows that and the yellow's the bike yeah. lane. So it looks like we've got bike lanes and I don't know what that spaghetti mess is up there. I guess yeah. that's Colonial Park, but Yeah, I think that is, yeah. Because that is considered Multi no, that's, so, that's Manville Borough. That that's not us. Sorry, that's not Colonial Park. Well, you can see us. We're at six fifteen yeah. in between those two green sections. That's six mile run. Yeah, right. six twenty three is kind of the. Yeah, you can see the border of Franklin. Yeah, sorry that that that's not all us. Obviously, yeah, there's other stuff. That that spaghetti up there must be something else. Duke Park, maybe. Who knows? Doesn't matter. It's not us. <laughs> yeah, yes, that is Duke Duke Island. Um Duke Far it, what oh my gosh, I can't speak Duke today. Farms, you got it. Sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I don't know if this map, this map might work. It might be up to date. Um, I'm not 100% sure, so I'd have to go and see. I see. So I can see Butler, which is that sort of three, you know, three, three armed thing down in the middle above 632. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then below that is the, the red trails on there is looks like uh, the 10 mile run. And then below down there to the left looks like maybe it's not Flemmer, but the, uh, the, the barn, the horse property down there. Yes. The, the historical house combined with the Rockingham. horse property. Yeah. No, no, not uh, is that Rockingham that far down? I'm hmm. pretty sure. It's not on that side of the road, I don't think. On five eight, uh No, I think that's what's the Speeden house, maybe? Hmm. That's what I'm Speedin. thinking it is. Oh, huh. Speeden Speeden something further. house. Yeah. And Could then be. below that would be down below would be maybe Flemmer way down at the very tip <laughs> bottom of the township there. Yeah. I mean, I guess what we could do actually, so the county in order to make this map, they had to have this data. So maybe if we, unless we want to map them ourselves so that it's like consistent and it's like very, you know, detailed, we can well, how do would that. This, how would this merge in with the maps that the the fellow from Franklin IT is doing? Well, so what I can do is the other option is I could ask the county if they have this data as a shape file, and then he can import that into our own GIS system. Um, yeah, that's a great idea because yeah. we, we only really need the Franklin part, obviously. Right, right. So I could ask, I mean, they must, because in order to make a map like this, you can't just draw these on. It has to really be a shape file, which is what our files now are, the ones that we all map, those have been convert, you know, turned into shape files so they can be moved around. So if they have this as a shape file, I can request just the Franklin piece and then we can import it onto like our township <laughs> tax map to and street map, whatever however we want it. I think it's pretty simple. I think I just have to like fill out a form and request it. Well, that sounds like a great idea. And you know, and if we could have some reason that doesn't work out, then we can revisit, you know, doing it ourselves. Um, but if we can just import it, that would be ideal. So I can see if they have it for trails, and even I'll just say, even if they have a separate bike lanes um shape file i can see if i can get as much as possible and then we can kind of figure out what we want and how we want to use it great thank you all right so chuck do you what do you need for what you sent do you need everyone to go through the pieces that they haven't gone through yet and submit you comments or what is the what's the best uh, why, why, uh, why don't you just uh if if you find anything, just send me a note, and uh, you know we'll go and take a look at it. And uh, I think you know Diana and I probably wander around the township more some more and see what else we can find, and uh, you know try to you know add add as much detail as we can. Uh, and uh, it sounds sounds like a plan to me. Um, Chuck, thank you so much for doing all this work. Thank you. Oh. Actually, it's 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 enjoyable. It's uh, something nice to think about. Yeah, no, it's a ton of work, so it's great. Really good. All right, so I think that kind of takes care of that for right now. I followed up with AT. So Anne Marie, I know you re um, you re walked the uh, Negri Napodi site, and he got your edits, and I sent you that map um, for your review. So he is, I guess, ready to start making the final map on that. And he's still working on the other maps, so hopefully I'll be getting them in, you know, piece by piece, and then we can put those in the final plan. But I know he was working on the updates that Anne-Marie sent. Did you have any um, edits to that, Anne-Marie, or? Um, I, my only question was that you sent me what I redid. Right. Did that include what I did the first time? Because there was 
one thing missing. It looked like it was it was just that day, right? It wasn't the whole thing. Right. Yeah. It was just what yep. we did. Okay, fine. Because yep. one thing glaring was missing, but it was probably in the previous edition that this was not layered on top of yet. Right. Correct. Yeah. But what you saw seemed like it was okay. It's what I added and reviewed. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So I think we're done with all of our GPSing, which is good at this point. Um, AT continues to work on the maps. And so as I get them in, really, that's kind of like what I'm waiting on is to get those maps in. And so as soon as I get those, I can put them in the plan. And in the meantime, if you all can send your comments to Chuck on what he put together, and then we can just incorporate those pages into the plan. Um, and then I will ask the county about those shape files and fill out whatever I have to fill out. Okay. Hey, Tara, just, just yeah, so you yeah. know, I'm, I'll uh, remap the um, Inman to go around the um, more or less the uh, wooded area, you know, the softball field rather than going through the uh, parking lots. Yeah, that'd be great. So I still, I still need to do that. Oh, okay. All right. So you're going to do that. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. That's fine. So then we'll, we'll update that one as well. I think I just need to do that section. Right? So, so more or less. By the softball fields and then work my way up mm -hmm. to the kiosk. Yes. And the, softball, and the baseball field up up at the top of the park. Okay. Yep. Thanks. All right. And just let me know when you have finished it. And then this way I can follow up with AT. So, you know, just be like, hey, it came in. Just yeah. want to see what's going so, on. So he knows what it is. Yeah. It's hey, not. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some spaghetti. Okay, thing so you, like, yeah. You're going to remap that. Okay. Perfect. And I, I was, you know, I was out there um, this weekend um, and I was wondering, like, you know, there are a couple of like more mushy parts. I really like the going along the edge versus the parking lot myself, but I did notice there are a couple of mushy parts. And I'm wondering if we're going to want to like address those so, um, in some way. I don't know, Jim, if you've been, if you looked into that or not, or did you notice any mushy parts? Yes. Yep. And, and right. Yeah. Right by behind that soccer field. I know there's like a wooden walkway, but it's a really short. It's just to cover real mushy parts, but you're right. It could get very wet out there. So I don't know, you know, I don't know. Like it's probably wetlands, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we could probably lay down uh, what uh, trail people call uh, punch-ins or bog boards on those areas there, which would allow people with a, you know, just to they sort of float on top of the, uh, mushy park and mm -hmm. would allow a person even with a stroller to go, go across that area. So yeah, that's maybe that's something we'll have to add. Um it maybe it's something that we can uh talk to public works about as well. Like is that something that they could do over the summer or I, I don't know like as far as like adding some I know we're just getting our benches now so also, yeah, possibly they could. The only potential, um, uh, I'm just trying to get a map up here. The only potential um, loop, not loop, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know why the heck I can't think straight today, but um, the only potential issue could be is if it's an actual wetland there to put something down. We just have to make sure that we're not like in the territory of like we need uh, approval from DP or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking what well, Chuck was describing, which would float and it wouldn't be, you know, it's a non permanent structure. I was thinking that might be that might be okay. But yeah, we just definitely need to check. Yeah, a lot of the, the floating or non permanent structures don't require approval, which is good, but there are some that actually do, which is okay. difficult, but not impossible. So I think that's probably that, but we can definitely ask. Um, that it gets on DPW's schedule, um, you know, we just need to kind of let them know exactly like what it is we want them to do and where. Yeah, or the other thing is like, if we have another scout um, who's looking for a project, we could also, have we had any scouts approach us? And we've had um, Girl Scouts, like, have we had any Boy Scouts recently? A few months ago, there was some Boy Scouts working at um, Negri Napodi on weeding and stuff like that, but nothing since then. That was, I think, in the that was in the summer, maybe. 
Okay. Yeah, that sort of fell apart. I don't know what what will happen with that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, Tara, is there anything else you wanted to cover for uh, Pathways and Trails plan? Um, I don't at this point. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that you guys want to cover. I mean, we're basically kind of now I'm waiting on the maps and, uh, you know, I mean, if no one has any comments to Chuck's items, then I can just add that into the plan minus the roadway ones until they're finished. And then it's kind of just like, we need the maps. We need to verify them and I need those to do the final calculations. So exciting. It's coming together. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I can, uh, yeah. I'm ecstatic that we're finally reaching the end of the process. I'm sure mm. many share my enthusiasm for being done with it for a while. Yes. But, this is a 10 year plan, correct? Mm. Uh, we're, we're a couple of years late. I mean, it depends if we're just going to synchronize or not with the master plan. That's really the question. Right, 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 right. Okay. Because if we are, I think we're a little out of sync with the master plan right now. Right. Okay. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the site plan review. So at the, um, at the last environmental commission meeting, which was just on Monday night, um, we had three applications come to us. One was, um, uh, let me back up. One was brand new. Two were updates to existing applications. So of those, um, only two of them maybe could kind of pertain to us, but I think it'd be of interest for you to know anyway. So um, the first one is, it's called um, the Villas at Norma Park. And let me share my screen. Let me actually, let me get this up here first. And let me share, where's my share? share. Uh, okay. Villas at Norma Park. So basically what it is, is let me get back over here now, because I was looking at Inman Park for the, uh, for the wetlands there. Uh, it took away my thing that I wanted. Okay. Um, no big deal. All right. So what it is, is it's a proposed townhouse development and it came in a while back and they had to make some, um, some changes based on comments from planning, but what it is, and this is why I wanted to show you is you can see it's right off Franklin Boulevard. Just to give you an idea, it's this, this lot, this. What are you saying this? Oh, okay. This, and this and this, it's all these four lot, one, two, five lots. I'm sorry, these lots here. So, give me the back of the line on those. Uh, yes, it is. 234 lots three through seven. Okay. Thank you. So what they're proposing there is a uh, townhouse development and there's going to be, um, I believe it's 10 townhouses um, and there's going to be two in each building. Um, and uh, again, just residential on these lots, which are already undeveloped. There's nothing there as you can see. Uh, right off of Franklin Boulevard, the access is going to be off of Norma Ave, um, which is right here. And uh, they are proposing just, you know, they are proposing a recreation area. Um, but I wasn't sure if you guys want to take a look at this to see if there would be any recommendations for trails, just because, you know, it is located over here by Hillcrest School. You know, yep. Hamilton Street, you can see, is down here. So I just kind of wanted to to show you that one. The Environmental Commission is recommending. I have their memo here. Let's see. Um, they are removing from this site 27 trees, but they're replanting 90 trees. Um, the biggest problem they have is that of the 27 trees they're removing, which is relatively a small amount compared to other applications we get. Six of them, though, have are trees that are 30 inches in caliper or greater, and one is 34 inches in caliper or greater. So the environmental commission wants to them to try and, you know, save that those trees or as many of them as possible. 
They also recommend the pervious pavement to reduce storm water and get them below the impervious coverage because this application is before the zoning board only because they exceed the impervious coverage, uh, which is 40. 5% is allowed and they have 46.2. So they're very close, but you know, they still exceed it. Um, they were going to plant, did you say plant 90 trees? Yes, they're removing 27 and planting 90. Okay. One question I have, because I'm looking at it on my, on a second screen using Google maps. There appears to be on the Franklin Boulevard frontage. If mm -hmm. if you zoom in on that, it looks like there is an existing sidewalk. Will that be retained? Because I would hate to think there'd be suddenly a gap where there might where I believe there's continuous sidewalk here. Yeah, I believe yes that the sidewalk is supposed to be retained. That at least is in the proposal. Let me just go and double check here. Um but yes, there was, as far as I remember, there was no change to the sidewalk. Okay, because it's hard to, in Google Maps, if you look at that section, some of the sidewalk is obscured by the tree cover that borders that, that is on the edge of that property. So it's hard to see if these, it looks like the sidewalk continues underneath it, which would be lovely. Um, but, uh, yeah. you know, I would Let think walk it. You know, keeping the sidewalk, because I think it, it goes, I'm pretty sure the sidewalk continues all the way down to the Franklin apartments down there and then to the school frontage that's further down Franklin Boulevard and goes all the way up to Hamilton Street. So that's a pretty good walking connector. That would yes, be Yes, no, you're right. Up. Let me look here and see. This is the overall site plan. I don't know why I said this at the environmental commission too. all these little comment boxes. I think that was just left on there by accident. It doesn't look like, cause that's not normal to have all these little comment boxes everywhere. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Propose. Nope. Too far. These things just take a little bit to, there we go. Side Propose. note. I. I just remembered there is a bike path on Franklin Boulevard. Um, oh, there is. There is. Uh, all the way down to Easton Avenue um, to the, I guess it's the Landing Lane Bridge. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll take a look at that too. Just looking. Is, is that a bike path that looks like a sidewalk or a bike path that's like on a street. lane in the road? Uh, on street bike path. On street, okay. I'll try to get my bearings here. Oh, here's Ralph Street. Okay. Ralph Street. Let me look at my map here now. Ralph Street. Where are you? There's Norma. Ralph. Okay. So, <laughs> so this plan is like oriented. Ralph Street is right below it going this way. So that means Franklin Boulevard is, is it up here? Let me get back here. Ralph. Yes, Franklin Boulevard. Okay, so then this is Franklin Boulevard. I'm just trying to see now about the sidewalk. Front yard setback. I'm going to zoom for a minute here. Come on. Proposed new county curb along entire frontage of Franklin Boulevard. Proposed new sidewalk along entire frontage of Franklin Boulevard. Okay, that's good. So that is good. So they're going to basically improve, replace it and improve, you know, give us a new one there, I guess. Yeah. So sure. it looks like the county is requiring um, that the sidewalk, I guess, be extended along the entire frontage as well as a new curb. So that's good. So will that be designated as a, a walk, hike, and bike path or just as a walking path? And a similar th question. Uh, what's the situation on DeMont Lane? Is that is that a cycling path as well as a walking path? I think it's the one on DeMont Lane is considered a multi-use path. So yes, that's walking and biking. But this here they're calling a sidewalk. So I don't know. But let's see. It says C County sidewalk detail. So yeah, but usually when they use the term sidewalk, it's not intended for bicycles. Yeah, I would think no. But let me see if the detail is here. It's probably in the other set of plans. This is lighting. And especially if, as Chris pointed out, that they have in addition an existing 
marked bike lane in the roadway, then it would then they should be mutually exclusive. One would be for walkers, the sidewalk, and the bike lane would be for bikes, and they they shouldn't mix if the two are together. Yeah. Well, I need to go and take a look at that. So let's see. So the sidewalk. Oh gosh, this is showing a manhole though. Where is the is the sidewalk above it? Oh, okay. That's kind of interesting. All right, let's see here. Concrete sidewalk. Which is what that's called driveway sidewalk. Yeah, that's the construction details. I don't think they're indicating usage, but typically yeah. soil, you know, the, the sidewalks are bike. Uh, not supposed to be used for bikes. Interestingly, it looks as though we have the a plethora of riches on Franklin Boulevard, which I'm not complaining about, but there looks like to be, according to Google Maps, a sidewalk on both sides of Franklin Boulevard. Yes. Yep. Oh, here's the county sidewalk detail. I just want to see if it shows how wide it is or anything that would give us an idea of its use. But I think this is like, a yeah. I don't think this is going to be considered a bike path, Chuck. I think this is just going to okay. be a straight up sidewalk. That's not to say people won't use it with a bike. I see. I don't believe the Easton Avenue has a pretty long run of what looks to be a sidewalk from its width and construction materials running from landing lane almost all the way to Cedar Grove Lane. But, right. But yeah. again, I see yeah. people riding bikes on it, but I I don't it looks like a sidewalk. It's a concrete, it's a three foot wide concrete square typically. Oh, and then here sidewalk. too <clears throat> existing curb and sidewalk along Norma to remain. So that's good. Yeah. From, from well, uh, east. Cedar Grove is asphalt. Right. Cedar Grove, Cedar Grove has does not have sidewalk along all of its length. There's uh, some short sections of it that it may be considered asphalt multi-use, but just a short section, and yeah. then it's just bike lane. But on Easton <laughs> Avenue, it's a, it's a narrower concrete. It doesn't. It, you know, the DeMott one and the Van Cleef one are multi-use asphalt. Right. And the JFK one is as well. And Cedar Grove has a little stretch of that from like Marino, Trepto Road down to not quite to New Brunswick Road. It, it ends at around the, the pool club slash Cedar Grove school. <clears throat> from JFK to Cedar Grove, it's asphalt. And it's not marked at all as, as anything, but it's asphalt. Yes, and in the other direction, I think it's just concrete sidewalk all the way out to Landing Lane. The Landing Lane. Uh, yeah, for me, I, I, so the, I, we're talking about the Easton Avenue. Easton Avenue, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, sidewalk. And from uh, to Cedar Grove Lane is asphalt about three feet wide. Uh, not the greatest surface uh, from some uh, Franklin from JFK to Landing Lane. There are concrete sidewalks, but uh, uh, I think most cyclists are actually on the road. I know at least one person who was who died on that section of the road riding his bicycle there, and I have the feeling there's a few others. I've seen a number of people. I, I on Easton Avenue, I, I use that quite a bit. I see a number of people using their bikes on the sidewalk, and I, I'm not thinking mm -hmm. we should prohibit that. I know this is a slight tangent here, but I just I don't think we should yeah. prohibit that. It's it's very likely people will use a sidewalk for their <laughs> bicycles, but it's technically not officially that, especially when there's a bike lane present. But I don't I don't think we have any intention of trying to police that. So mm -hmm. oh, so for the the map and the parcels we were talking about for this development. Um, if you are headed northwest on Franklin Boulevard, uh, okay. the, the sidewalk doesn't continue on this parcel side of the road. So it, it's only on this block right now. And if you're looking at Street View on Google Maps, you'll see that the sidewalk doesn't continue to the next block. 
Uh, I, although on the other side of the road, it does continue. Franklin Boulevard, you're saying? Right. Okay. So the northern edge of this parcel, mm -hmm. uh, I guess northeastern edge of this parcel, there is currently sidewalk. Right. Uh, but it ends um, for this this area. Okay. Once you hit Norma Ave. The there is a crosswalk, but it doesn't go anywhere. Right here. The county is requiring the sidewalk along the complete frontage of Franklin Boulevard. So, <laughs> but you're right. This crosswalk here, you're saying it doesn't, what is it? Where does it go to here? It looks like there's a little pad, but there are no, there's no sidewalk built. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then block. it looks like you're intended to use the crosswalk to go to the other side of Franklin side. Boulevard. That right. There's one yeah. there. Yeah. yeah you're fine. right. Yeah. It does, there is a gap there. Pat, uh, you're right, uh, Chris. You're right. Well, it's so, probably used to get to the school across the street. Right. Hamilton. Yeah. It, it continues again once you go further down to ho where Holly Street is located and the uh, those Franklin apartments. Because in front of the Franklin apartments, there's sidewalk again. So, is there any comments anyone on this one? Or, I mean, they're they're extending the sidewalk already along Franklin Boulevard. I mean, they that's they can't be required to go this way, obviously, but um, they are keeping the sidewalk along Norma. It's really just residential development. But any comments or my 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 only comment is, I guess, to um, thinking about. Um, open space and like I know that's not that's not the conversation for this but it just reminds me that you know wanting to preserve as much open space as possible in densely populated parts of town like just as a reminder to share that with open space that we do you know want to um to preserve some pockets of open space um in in this uh, more densely populated part of our town, so I yeah. know that I, I was scanning scanning around too, and there's you know there's more there's more in this area um, that connects to some of the places that we were talking about as well. Um, but I guess for Chuck and for John, just to to keep that in mind for open space committee too. Yeah. All righty. Um, the other one is, I believe it's this one. Is this 190? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is these two properties. Let me zoom or move. So this one, this is on Davidson Avenue. It's 195 and 215 Davidson Ave. And that near Rotor Clip? Yes, it is. Yep. Yep. Rotor Clip is this property right here. And to rotor clip, I don't know what that is. R rotor clip is a, they've been a long time uh, supporter of the Tour de Franklin, so that's why I know them. Uh, oh, okay. But they're the ones, they border 287 and they have that digital billboard just before you get off of exit 10 going southbound on 287. Right, correct. So right but, to the north of this, you'll see there's 287. Um, this proposal is, this is the Holiday Inn um, on Davidson, and then this is like a office building of some kind. I'm sorry, this is a warehouse that has a little office in it. Um, both, they're saying both are abandoned. Someone on the Environmental Commission, though, said that they think Holiday Inn is still up and running. So I don't, not that it really matters, but to us. But the proposal here is to knock down both of these buildings and, they, and to put a warehouse a 201,000 square foot warehouse right here in the middle. So I'll show you those plans um, in a second, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of where this is. It's on, let me back out. Well, you know where it is, Mark, because a rotor clip, but I don't know of, if this is of real interest to, uh, for our purposes, only because, I mean, 287 is right here. Then right below it, you have the atrium extension, which we had, there's a proposed warehouse going in along this way. Um, so I'm not sure if it really is for our, you know, purposes, you know, worth making any comment, but I just wanted to show you and I'll show you the plans if you're interested in seeing them as well. Let me get that. That one's before the planning board. So they don't require any variances. I am interested. I was, I was going to have a function at that holiday Inn, and I called and there's no answer. 
Oh, so, okay. So yeah. I saw in the paper today that they were buying the, the property had been sold and they were going to put a warehouse there. So yeah, it's a distribution oh. warehouse and they're actually proposing 134 parking spaces, which is a lot for a warehouse, but it is supposed to be a distribution warehouse. So there could be quite a lot of employees there. And a lot of truck traffic. Yeah. I went right to the landscape plan, but that's okay. We can look at the landscape plan because that actually kind of helps. Um, nah, you know what? No, let's not do that. Let's look at the correct <laughs> one. Oh, let's look at the right one. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Give me one second. Just so you can see kind of what's going on. Um, this is a big one. They have to split the plans into two. Here we go. All right. Okay. Doke. So that is just an aerial. I'm not going to show you that one only because it'll take forever to load that up. Okay, here we go. So this is the demolition plan. We want to see the overall, here we go, overall site layout. So this is, I'll extend it a little just so you can kind of see what's going on. But this is Davidson Avenue over here for your reference. And then this is the warehouse. Um, so you can see it is going to kind of be right there in the middle. The access is off of Davidson Avenue. These are all passenger vehicle parking lots. Um, let me zoom out a smidge. Okay. This is where the bays, like the tractor, or the trailer bays will be. This over here is a bioretention basin. And uh, what else can I tell you about it? There's some EV parking stage, EV uh, ready and EV charging stations going in. Uh, not much more I can say about it except for that. <laughs> so Davidson Avenue is on your far right. Of yeah. Yeah. So it's Davidson Avenue is a retention basin, and then there's this huge ugly warehouse. Yeah, 201,610 square feet, 32 loading docks, 12 trailer parking spaces, and 134 car parking spaces. Wow, that's a lot of semis. Yes, it is. And that is, that's all in the 195 Davidson lot? 195 and then 215. The one next to it, okay. The one next to it. My understanding, I just want to make sure I'm right here. So basically, they're going to be using both lots. And so on the 215 section, there's also over here, this is a storm, storm water retention here. It looks like another bioretention basin over here as well um, for storm water management, some tree plantings over here. The warehouse you can see is over on this side. So now Davidson is all the way over here and 287 is still up above us. Um, yeah. So that's the plan for that. So for trails, I don't think there's there's much that we would comment on, but I did want you to see that since it's you know new proposal. Let me see if there's anything else I can show you here. What's this one? Drainage. No. So there's no sidewalk next to Davidson. Davidson um, doesn't have anything in the way of sidewalks that I can recall. No, right. Davidson does not. Oh, well, actually, not not true. Actually, um, Davidson has a short section of sidewalk in front of the old. Remember the old convention center? Yes. Okay, just in front of that, and then it goes on a sidewalk over the 287 bridge. Yeah. And continues down to Landing Lane, but that's it. It only went in front of the convention center. It doesn't continue on past that up Davidson to the hotels or anything. Um, and it's not on the other side of the street, which is where, because across from the convention center is where rotor clip and then these this space is. Right. Yeah, I'm very familiar with that holiday, and unfortunately, but yeah, oh, sorry. It looks like <laughs> it looks like here. There's also a road widening easement. That's that's a county road, so I don't see any proposed sidewalk, but there is that easement there. So there's really nothing that can be done on that at, at like permanent at this point anyway. Let me just make sure there's no sidewalk here. Because on a weekend, it'd be a great place to ride down. Yeah, the curb oh, opening is proposed for here. So I guess it looks like this is where the trucks would come in. 
right? Yes, because they would come on down over this way, go to their heavy duty asphalt area, and then they would be parking in their bays and whatnot in that. And then if you're a worker or coming to visit the warehouse for whatever reason, see, this is interesting. They're putting the geo web pavers here. So that's like green pavers. So this is green infrastructure here that leads right into the stormwater detention basin, which is also green infrastructure. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, let me say, uh, okay. And then if you are working or you're coming to visit, I guess you would come in this entrance, this Southern entrance. So two entrances off of Davidson and you would park in one of these spots. And they have a walking sidewalk within the, within the, uh, you know, along the warehouse basically, but, you know, so, so that's that. I don't know that we would have any comments. If you do, that's totally fine. I just figured you probably want to see that and get a chance to look at it. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Tara. All right. So that was it though. Okay. All right, let me pull the agenda back up. Wait, was there another site for a warehouse, Tara? Was um, there was Atrium an, Way or something uh, like that? Yes, that's just an update to a plan that's from a while back. Um, but yeah, on Atrium Way, there's an, a warehouse proposed there, but that was done, I think, almost a year ago, and they just submitted some updated documents. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is um, new business. The sustainable Jersey grant opportunity that is due in 2 days. Yes. February 10th. So, um, I've been working on the grant. Application for sustainable Jersey for the name and Williams Memorial Park, the trail improvements we talked about that came out of the crime. Prevention through environmental design report. Um, and so I did. Presented to the open space advisory committee. They were very, you know, happy about it. Thought it was a great idea. Councilman Wright also came. He's the councilman for the 4th ward. So he came to listen to the presentation. And he also was very interested and happy that we were going to be proposing the grant there. And he thinks that the park could really use the trail improvements. So. Um, we have the buy in basically I talked to the township manager about it, the mayor, the councilman. So it looks like everyone is on board with submitting it. Uh, so, in the meantime, I've been the, the grant application has to be submitted via an online portal. But whenever I submit a sustainable Jersey grant, I always kind of type out the pieces in word, which is what I sent you the notes. And then I copy and paste it into the, the you know, the portal because I don't trust the portal to be like 100% honest. So, um, I sent you guys the notes that I have together. They might look a little crazy, but they're in the order of the application. So I just wanted to pull it up here. And if anyone had a chance to review it and has any comments on it or wants me to add something or remove something, I kind of wanted to get that before I submit it, which is yes, on the 10th is when it's due. So, so that is that. So I can go through it kind of quick here. So the grant application action plan, this kind of shows, you know, and this is their form that has to be filled out. So the first thing they want to know is the project promotion promotion. Where will the sponsors basically be recognized? So I listed the cleanup days, um, a green infrastructure workshop that I'm hoping Rutgers will help us with. And It'll be a good way to explain to people why are we doing this at the park? What does it mean? What is the maintenance and what is its job? How is it going to help improve the park? So that'll be for that. Um, and then the community meetings, which the councilman um, agreed was very important to talk to the community and he's willing to help us kind of get in touch with people in the community or go to meetings with us to kind of because he's very involved with the with that neighborhood in particular. So. He can help us along with that and um, we'll definitely use their logos and, and everything on all of our signage and flyers. Um, and then the proposed date of the ribbon cutting, basically what I put there is that the green infrastructure projects will most likely be put in and we can have a ribbon cutting at a rain garden if they want and they're more than welcome to come. 
the trail itself will probably not be done at the end of the grant period, maybe, but if we need wetlands permitting, probably not. So we'll have to kind of play that by ear. Um, the planning steps that I have listed out is doing site visits to verify the findings of the, the crime prevention report, identify the areas in need of cleanup and prep work and conceptualize the green infrastructure on the existing trail. Then we would need to produce conceptual mapping and trail location for the nature trail, which Maureen, um, our engineer in public works can help us with. Um, we need to speak with DEP to understand our requirements for permitting and basically try to find out, is there any things we can do that get us out of requiring such, you know, significant permitting if that's required. Um, and then identify the flooded areas on the existing paved rail and conceptualize the green infrastructure strategies. Most likely these are going to be small scale rain gardens along the trail. So they'll still look aesthetically pleasing, but it'll be interesting for people to understand that they're also functioning and doing a job to make the trail more accessible. We can use the geo web pavers, like in that site plan that I showed you before, and they basically are grass pavers, but they have like an infiltration system. So that is a, another good thing. Um, for the implement, implementation steps, uh, I put on there about the community cleanups, and I think we can coordinate with Somerset County Solid Waste Division so that we can get rid of those tires and any other large solid waste debris that they can take. Uh, the wetlands permit is going to be a, a big process if we need to submit that. So you know that's in there, and then again the design and installation of the rain gardens and pavers. You know as we see fit. The other big thing that came out of the crime prevention program was the rebranding campaign. So in that crime prevention report, one of the main things that was stated is that we really need to rebrand this park and almost start a campaign about look at the great improvements that we're making. And this is why this park is going to be such a great asset to not only the neighborhood, but, you know, all of Franklin. So working on that, um, it will be part of the grant. And I'm not really sure what that entails yet, but I think we'll we'll figure it out as we get in there. Um, and the other thing that was uh, talked about a lot in there was that there needs to be a regular maintenance schedule at Naaman Williams that removes barriers to natural surveillance. So natural surveillance is basically allowing everyone to be able to see into areas of the park that are currently kind of blocked off which allows for some non-legitimate activity to occur. So by the permanent bathrooms, for example, there's an area where uh, it was noticed that people were congregating a lot because they could be hidden. Um, where the trail is proposed, one of the biggest reasons that um, Rutgers proposed the trail was because they said, not only will it allow people to have a natural area to recreate, but it will make that area usable for legitimate uses instead of being used for like a dumping ground or for other types of activity because it's so hidden. So it kind of like makes it out there in the open. Um, and then the last part is community engagement. And this is all about holding the information session. Safi had recommended that we hold one at Parkside, which is the senior living, which is right by. She has a contact there so we could hold a meeting there hold a meeting in the park, talk to people during the community cleanup day. Councilman Wright, like I said, has already offered his complete help and support, which is excellent. Um, the green infrastructure thing, uh, workshop. And then this came out of the crime prevention report also is to have a community task force or a group of park ambassadors. It's almost like a neighborhood watch kind of thing. I know um, in the report, it was mentioned something was being worked on with the police and I think it was kind of like a park watch thing. So we would have to follow up with them um, to see, you know, is that ongoing? Is it planned? Like what's happening? And then we have to say, how are we going to evaluate and report? So it's basically, we're going to use resident feedback, which we already have some from this report and from the local health assessment. We'll submit our designs for the nature trail and the green infrastructure. We can photo document for a year after the grant during the grant period and a year after the grant period to show improvements in flooded areas and trail accessibility. I'll provide monthly reports to the environmental commission, you guys and open space um, about the grant. And then during the cleanup days, we can document what's been collected. Um, the environmental commission does that on their stream cleanups and it's pretty helpful. 
Um, and then actually, so Bo Burtis from Recreation, he has a um, park usage surveillance that he does and it's he's basically able to find out how often are people visiting the park how long are they staying for is there increases during certain times of year so we can work with him to kind of do a few of those studies at name and williams so that's a very interesting to see actually get the data how it's used and who's using it yeah so in the crime prevention report, they had a little bit of data, but not a lot they because did. of COVID. They only, um, you know, surveyed, I think, 30 people. But I think they yeah. found that most people were going there and staying there between 19 and 30 minutes. Mm. They're probably doing the loop. Yes. Yep. So that's the action plan. Um, I guess I'll just keep going. And, Kate, and Lynn, if you guys have questions, they'll interrupt me. Or if you want to tell me at the end, whatever works. Um, we need to put in what our team members are. So I put myself in there, Carl, obviously we need Carl. Um, Bo Burtis, he's the superintendent of recreation. Safi Callen, she's the manager of special projects. She was uh, involved in the crime prevention study, but she also is a very, very talented with graphic design and community engagement. That's one of her very, she's excellent at that. So, um, so that's good. Uh, Maureen is our professional engineer through DPW, Councilman Wright. And then I just have various commissioners from the Environmental Commission to help out, as well as trails and open space. I didn't want to list everyone's name and contact information, so I just put various, but we can all obviously help, of course. However, you know, everyone feels comfortable. Um, I'm sorry, hang on one second. Do you need something? Good? Okay. <laughs> I looked over, I'm like, uh-oh. Um, Let's see here. Uh, project implementation. We already kind of went through this in the action plan. You have to list who will benefit from the project. So I basically said residents adjacent to Naaman Williams, frequent visitors. People do apparently cut through the park to get to the park and ride, which is right nearby. So those people also would benefit because maybe they want to take a walk through the nature trail on their way home, or maybe they're able to fully cut through and not, you know, have wet shoes or whatever else. So help them. Um, let's see, our goals here, increasing green infrastructure as a treatment, providing equitable access to open space and recreation, increasing safety at the park and advancing the principles of the crime prevention study. Um, and then this is a note for me documents to upload. I already uploaded the crime prevention study. I already uploaded the map that shows the adjacent township owned properties. Um, and then I want to upload some pictures and our green infrastructure plan, and then our local health assessment presentation, because that really shows, you know, some of the feedback that we've gotten from ward four, because we've separated it by ward. So, yeah, so that's good. So, and then the last thing to go over with you is the budget. Now, just keep in mind, this budget is a ballpark. Money doesn't have to be spent exactly as it's written here. If you make a major change, you have to let sustainable Jersey know. But if you're moving it in a way that's like, oh, I bought, you know, 50 signs instead of printing 50 flyers, that's not a problem. So we have to list what's in kind services. So that's the township staff. I put in here $5,000 for Rutgers, and the reason that that would be is they could help us figure out where the green infrastructure should be on the trail and help us design it so that it's the most effective to actually make the trail usable. So they'll be able to really help us with that because they kind of specialize in that. They also did our green infrastructure study, so they're very familiar. Um, also, I was hoping they could help us with the green infrastructure workshop because they do a lot of presentations on that. So they're skilled in that. Um, and then, you know, we have in kind of my time, which is already in kind. It's I'm already, you know, being paid through the township, but have to list that in there. We'll use our own municipal vehicles and equipment as well as our sign machine. Um, I put in that the construction materials for the green infrastructure, 6,500 funded by Sustainable Jersey and another 1,500 to be funded by the township. It might be more than that, but the township would pay the difference. Um, the trail surface material, I put in 5,500 for that, knowing it's going to be much more than that. Mm -hmm. um, reason being is that we do have access to the open space trust fund. So using 
you know, some money from the grant to show that we are like moving forward with the trail is good, but the township is going to have to pay the bulk of that because it's going to be more than this grant will allow. So that's why I chose to do it that way. Not that this set is set in stone. Maybe there might be a better way to go about that. And then in the itemized expenses, you know, t-shirts for volunteers, refreshments for volunteers and at the meetings, trash bags, gloves, and things like that for the community cleanup day. And then the wetlands application, I just split it half funded by the grant, half funded by the township because the wetlands applications, everything that goes into it is super expensive. So, and that's how I came up with the $20,000 number. Not again, it doesn't have to be, you know, if you guys think, you know what, I really think we should put more money into the trail surface. I can absolutely move it. But I, this was kind of like my jumping off point. Right. And that's it. So this is everything to be submitted. So it looks, it would be 20,000 from the grant and then another roughly 23,000 for the entirety over time would have to be funded by the, uh, the township. And that's it. So I guess if you guys want to discuss or any questions or comments on it, we can, uh, I can like go through a piece by piece. Tara, thank you so much. I feel like you took everything we talked about at our last meeting and clearly analyzed the other reports yes. and really <laughs> embedded everything in here. So succinctly. Oh, good. I, I really appreciate it. Good. I'm glad it reflects kind of like what you guys were thinking. So. What do you guys think? About... Just, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just, I was the, the one thing I found a little surprised, like, because we, I think we had recommended only going for the, the 10,000 and then they open spaces pushed us back to the 20,000. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's a good point. That, are we concerned at all that that, I mean, I'm, I'm not really complaining. I, I don't really have a strong opinion either way. I'm just, is there any concern that that will, since there's less of the 20,000s to go around, that'll reduce our chances to get anything? Yeah, that is a concern. And I did bring that up at open space. Um, there are only five $20,000 grants that are given out. So yes, it does definitely reduce our chances. And the thing that's really annoying about it is that say you apply for the 20,000, but you don't get it, but they think you would be good for 10,000. They don't just put you in for the 10,000. It's just like, okay, next time apply for 10,000. Um, and I did state that to the open space committee, but they wanted to go for the 20,000 because of the size of the project. And they're all, uh, the other thought was sustainable Jersey supported the crime prevention study. So did the North Jersey transportation planning authority. And so did, um, Rutgers. So they're thinking, you know, that maybe gets us a shoe in along with our local health assessment, which is like, we're really trying to focus on equity. But you're right. I mean, those things hopefully help us, but you're right. If we don't get the 20,000, then we just don't, we just don't get it. Yeah, no, I, I, I think we have a lot of legs up as you just listed. I'm not, Yeah. I think it, I'm not against going for it. I guess I was, that was just a concern. I wanted to make, you know, yeah. I'm strong feeling for it. If, if open space wants to go for it, we go for it. But again, also is the, setting appropriate expectations about what can get done even with the 20k yes. i mean i think we were looking to explore and to see options with the 10k you know like you said it's unlikely we're going to get to a full trail implementation on just 20k you know i mean right. so people i hope everybody i think we here in our committee have reasonable expectations around what can be accomplished at 20k i hope everybody has that outside of this committee as well so Yes, I agree with you. And and I did, I think I, I got that point across to the open space committee. So I, I think they understand. Um, Good. And, I hope it also yeah. gets to, you know, cause it, it, higher up the chain, I mean, so to speak with the councilmen and so forth. Um, I'm, I'm, it's excellent that we have that kind of support and that they're on board, but sometimes, you know, I, I worry a little bit that folks in those positions hear what they would like to hear. And what they hear is we're going to get a new trail and, and it's all going to be done. And this grant's going to do it, you know, like, right. It's, it's not going to cover all right. that. And just that we set realistic expectations and we don't consider not finishing the trail, but we, and yet spending all 20 K to be some kind of a failure, you know, I agree. it should still be considered yeah. a success that we got the money and that we're using it in the right place. So. Absolutely. 
I we'll, agree. We'll with obviously you, yeah. judge it. We'll have to judge it later, but I, I wouldn't call the, the project if it happens. I wouldn't call the project a failure just because the trail isn't finished with only 20 K. I agree. Honestly, I think it would be a success if we get all the green infrastructure projects in and it actually makes the existing trail usable more of the time. And we even just get the wetlands permit in. I think that would be a huge success and it shows the open space advisory committee and the council as well. Listen, we put all of this effort into this trail. So we need to now make this trail happen, you know, using our open space trust fund money so that it's like a building process. But yeah, I agree with you. I mean, yes, we, and when we go to those community meetings or present at them, we have to make sure we'll make sure that that point gets across a hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. I didn't have any, it's not, you know, I guess not real criticism or, or stuff, just just things to be yeah. cognizant of as we move forward in the process and stuff for us to try as individuals or a committee to message around. Mm -hmm. You know, when yeah. when we're in contact with these folks or see people when we get out there, and I think many of us will probably try and be out there and be a part of cleanups and things like that. That that we continue to sort of try and subtly drop hints and message that. <laughs> Yeah, those folks, so. I agree with you. I had the same concern. Yes, absolutely. So, any other comments or questions? Yeah, I think it looks fabulous. It's very nicely laid out. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Go and ahead, Chris. Was, uh, no, I was saying, um, you know, given the, the time that, that we conceptualize this idea just in conversation and, and to see it together in this application, you know, in less than a month. I'm impressed, oh, <laughs> but everything looks great. And as far as the timeline and, and the engagement activities, it all seems feasible for, uh, especially with, like Mark was saying, with the support of the fourth ward councilman. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm excited to see uh, where this goes. Yeah. Uh, as far as timeline, we know where the applications do on Friday. Uh, how soon will we hear back from Sustainable Jersey? So they let us know by the beginning of May. That's the projected date of when they let us know. And then if we get it, we have 18 months to complete, you know, our part of it. So uh so that's, you know, that's how we how we do it. Hopefully we get it. But yeah, they they're pretty quick about getting back. So we'll know by May. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. Yep. So I think it's in a pretty good spot to submit. Um, I just have to like do some word smithing and then because I do want to to what Mark said I want to make sure when I submit the final that it really gets through that like this is our big picture and we're going to use this grant to get as far into that big picture as humanly possible but you know it, it depends I mean with DEP if they or you know it really depends on DEP a lot about what our wetlands permit requirements are going to be what their backlog is and reviewing them you know a lot of that's going to be dependent on that too. Okay. Well, Tara, just keep us posted if anything else you need from us. But I think this is just like a really nice launch. Um, yes. So it's so exciting that we had this idea just a few months ago, um, got the trails committee buy-in, connected it to this grant opportunity. And we know it's, you know, and now I feel like there's a nice timeline of how this is going to unfold. Um, yeah, so. absolutely. So we'll Great. submit it and we'll see how it goes and I'll, we, I'll keep you all posted. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is the National Trails Day Micro Grants Program, and that due date is February 20th. Yes. So this just came across my, I don't know if it's like a new thing or I don't know what happened exactly, but um, let me move. I just got to move this so I can see it. Uh, I hate it. Well, can I move this? No. Okay. Sorry. Hold on. I got to stop sharing for a minute. I got to close something so I can actually show it to you. Uh, I don't need this anymore. Let me move this over here. Okay. Now we should be good. So the, um, let me, let me just show it to you so that there's no, okay, here we go. So, all right, the American hiking society, that is the same organization that runs national trails day. I don't, I, I'm assuming they must have gotten money from Moose Jaw here. And it looks like they are hosting a micro grant program. And so basically what it is, is that, um, well, you can see here, it's for underrepresented communities to participate in meaningful events for this year's National Trails Day. 
So, again, it's specifically for underrepresented communities in the outdoors, and it's $1,500 to host an in person national trails day event. And additional funding may be available for event photographer takes place at a national, which is not us, but anyway. Um, here's the thing I thought that was interesting. It can be used towards transportation costs, hands on materials, stewardship supplies, gear, library products, food, promotion, other materials for an inclusive experience. Mm -hmm. um, and again, basically, it's just the grants are due on the 20th. Now, if we had never done a National Trails Day event with everything else going on, maybe I would say, oh, you know, this is another thing to worry about. We have so much going on. But we do National Trails Day anyway, so this would just be funding to do something. Um, the biggest thing is, is that it would have to be specifically organized for areas that have faced barriers to outdoor recreation, leadership, stewardship, which again, this really plays into our local health assessment that we're doing. So it's another thing we can put in our local health assessment, which I think is great. And we have to ex reasonably expect the likelihood of 15 participants. So I was thinking, you know, we have to start planning for National Trails Day anyway. And honestly, if we're working into the Naaman Williams Park project, I mean, it's almost like, should we try and do National Trails Day? It's not a big trail. Is there something we can do at Naaman Williams Park and we can get the $1,500 for it? And I could also, you know, we could kind of use that as part of our Naaman Williams project. I don't know if that's reasonable or not. So that's that. That's it. I just wanted to see if you guys thought it was worth um, applying for it. Yeah, I, I know Tara. You and I spoke um, about this before. I, I think I think it's a nice opportunity. Um, like I said, I, I like the fact that you're saying it's something we're already doing, and if we want to go the name and Williams route, then it kind of does a lead into that. That is true. Yeah, I mean, the other places I'm trying to think of, I mean, it's hard because we have to have, well, we could do Inman Park, right? What what ward is Inman Park in? Is that three, I think? I think that's three. I'm not sure. Um, I'm trying to think where else has like an actual trail that we can use. I guess the first thing is, does this sound like something any that, that you guys think is interesting to do? Do we have ideas that we could spend $1,500 on? It has to be spent on a national trail day event, correct? It does, but it says here, which is interesting that it can be used for your gear library products. So, you know, if we use binoculars for the national trails day event, obviously we can keep them and use them for something else or a flash, you know, not that we would use flashlights, but something along that, that, uh, yeah, that would spend a lot of money quick. Yeah. Tara, I'm also, you know, I, I had brought up before the idea about doing a hike on the towpath where Franklin Boulevard meets, you know, the, you know, the landing lane bridge. I don't know if that's going to be uh, open at that point, because I know they were doing some repairs there, mm -hmm. but that would be another, like, to get, you know, to get the, the residents of Franklin Boulevard um, uh out there as well. So they, it could be like Naaman Williams. It could be, you know, the same neighborhood, but, you know, further down the other side of Franklin Boulevard um, and, uh, and and do that. So it's Franklin Boulevard where it meets. Landing Lane Landing Bridge. Lane. Okay. I'm just yeah, not, so Franklin, yeah. So Franklin Boulevard turns into Landing Lane. Yeah. I know the improvements you're talking about to it, Landing Lane. I'm just not sure if they're going to be done yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, I guess it's, it wasn't the landing lane itself that I was thinking about. I was thinking about the, um, Chuck, what is that called? The spillway? The towpath? The, the spillway on the towpath. They were doing, I know, uh, I know Diana knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, They're still working it, it, on it. The way they, they torn up the spillway. Uh, they blocked off traffic uh, coming from Franklin Boulevard onto the towpath in that area. Uh, it's sort of hazardous right now, actually. Uh, Diana says it's impossible. She's been down there uh, recently, and and uh, uh, I did have I had a meeting with Patricia Kolesser, uh last week. I guess it was a week and 
just just prior to COVID, uh, and uh, uh, they weren't sure when that was going to be completed. Okay. Okay. I suspect that it would not be done by National Trails Day. The contractors okay. know to be very unreliable. Yes. Oh. Um, you can still use the towpath from behind the uh, the Winkle. What is it called? That okay. house by. Yeah, you, can, you can enter the towpath there. The prep uh, and, school and, 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 and go that that direction. And uh, and you know it's. Uh, but not always because they're always closing. Well, it, they, they've had construction in that area, uh, yeah, particularly the parking lot. They really reworked the parking lot. That it's uh, they're putting in a one hundred foot communication poles and manholes in that area to run cables across the canal at that point from Piscataway into Franklin. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah I saw the Pixie. Right now, the, Pixie uh, the lot is clear. Actually, I think I think uh, you, you can you can still get through there and a lot of and people are going through there daily uh, to get on the trail path. But sometimes, sometimes they've been closing it re, uh, recently because of big construction equipment. But I think that's over. Uh, but um, no, you would have to access the towpath through the Van Wickle House Demont Lane okay. uh, parking so, area if you were going to do that. Uh, okay, this, this is an idea. Uh, this is a, an issue that we should probably discuss further, I, I don't want to say too much uh, about it. Uh, the Park Service is trying to work with us, uh, but they're, they're, they're sort of ambivalent about permitting for events on the towpath in Franklin. And uh, if if you see from the write up that I did, uh, that I just uh, uh, sent to you folks, uh, they require ninety degree uh, applications ninety days in advance of advertised events uh, that would go on the towpath, uh, and but. There's some flexibility in terms of the size of groups, and I think they would be somewhat flexible about events that did not originate on the towpath, but then went on the towpath. For example, starting at uh, Van Wickle House and the trail area around there, and then moving onto the towpath for part of the hike. But uh, it's it's a little awkward. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks. For that. that was just an idea. Um, I know Terry, you'd also mentioned that. I mean, I guess we could also, did you say they could also include transportation? Transportation costs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, if we really wanted to, we could also, uh, you know, get a bus to go to any of our trails and, and possibly use that as almost like an inspiration of having more trails in the neighborhood or like you had suggested, just keep it at name and Williams and just kind of beef that up and use that as, as a opportunity to uh, make people aware of the other trails in town. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering, you know, to get a selling point to get people out who don't normally go to name and Williams. I mean, in June, walking around there would could be a little toasty. Um, there's not a lot of tree coverage. Yeah. Or we could make it like a fun trail day event with food or something to entice people out of their homes and back down. I, I don't know. It's just some interesting thoughts, but you're also thinking along purchasing gear, something like that. Could be, I mean, it depends on what, so it looks like we don't need to really submit the real, like in depth description until May 1st. Oh, okay. Um, but yet we need to submit something that basically says, like, here's where we're looking to do it. Here's why, and here's kind of along the lines of what we're thinking. So, yeah. um, it looks pretty simple. It's just, you know, the main thing is for this grant, it's for underrepresented communities. Right. 
I mean, to have it named Williams and to somehow tie it into the sustainability would be great. I just don't have any really clever I ideas. Know. Yeah, I'm I'm at a loss to think how you would make a good National Trails Day event that uses fifteen hundred bucks at Naaman Williams. Yeah, unless you did like a barbecue or a picnic. But is that going to be considered a a, tra a, a trail event? I mean, I, I don't know uh, what, they, what their interpretation. Have to walk around the the perimeter on the trail. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what they, I mean, maybe they'll be loose with their definition about how we could use it. I mean, maybe, I don't. I, don't I, I have to think, I don't, I'm just throwing out thoughts. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I don't, this is the first time I've seen this. So I don't know if it's, this is like a one-time grant that they got from this moose jaw, but um, I mean, if it's too much to think about right now, because it is kind of short notice, we could always, you know, see if it comes out again next year and still go ahead with our, you know, trails event that we're planning. I'm like, I, I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head, like what to do exactly. Yeah. It looks like they did offer this grant last year or in 2022. Uh, and yeah. they talk a little bit about the events they had then. Oh, right um, here, yeah. But I, I just don't think we can have like a, a targeted audience or a specific way or group to to really um bring to an event yeah I mean, we, we can generate something by may but i, I don't want to just speculate that we can do it when <laughs> like I, I personally don't have um you know specific connections to the community on on within that ward so yeah I, i'm trying to look and see what people did it looks like in some of these specific community groups were targeted um for the event which was you know, I don't, you're right. I don't know that we even can do that. Uh, guided hike. This one did an interactive story time and guided hike. Well, what did they use the money for? Like, honestly, if we were to get a bus, it would use all that money on the bus alone. It would. I mean, buses are so expensive right now. I mean, if we wanted to just go ahead with our normal national trails day kind of plan, but then target access. To people who might not have transportation to get there, that would be another idea that wouldn't create a lot, a ton of work for us. Um, but then it could also, if we were like, I don't know, and maybe it had to be like through the Parks and Rec website where people were signing up, and if they needed that transportation, it's kind yeah, of maybe different. maybe meet us somewhere, meet meet us at N Name and Williams, or meet us, you know, uh, and, and and we could take you or. Yeah, so that's a that's a really good idea. You know, what about? I I think the Lincoln Gardens Baptist Church has several shuttle buses. What if we reached out to them, partnered with them since they're very close to Naaman Williams Park, and made arrangements to try and get this grant to pay them for expenses to shuttle people to a different part of town for a walk at one of our bigger areas. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. yeah. Now we're cooking. That would be amazing. Yeah, we could partner with the faith-based organization to network and to, yeah, I really- I think, I think they've got at least a couple shuttle buses that they, in the past they did because their parking situation was not great so that people parked over uh, off near, you know, Franklin Boulevard and the school areas like that, and then they'd run a shuttle bus back and forth mm. on Sundays to alleviate some of the parking issues they have. So since this would be a Saturday right. and not a Sunday event, yeah. maybe the Maybe the church. I mean, I have no idea. I don't have a. I could find out. I could see if the food bank has a, a Lincoln Gardens Baptist Church contact. I could reach out to, mm -hmm. um, and ask if they'd be have any interest in partnering. Um, we could apply on the premise of trying to use it to, pay for transportation and say we have some ideas. I mean, I don't know how fast we what we need to propose in there if we need to already have made the contact. 
Mark, I think that we could just propose it as we're just going to rent a bus. And then if we can go your route and give them the money instead of a bus company, even better. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's an idea. We could just say we're looking to, we have some ideas, including the rental of a bus and just leave it open as though we were, we're going to spend this on transportation to try and get people from one part of town to the trip. Right. And then, and then if we, if it costs us less money for the transportation part, then we have more money to spend on like t-shirts or, or, or whatever it is. Water bottles. Whatever. Yeah. Or giveaways. Yeah. We would need giveaways, food giveaways or something. Or yeah. I like the water bottle idea is a nice one too. I don't know yeah. what it would cost, but. Um, yeah. A little or, gift or, or bag or while you're on the bus. Yeah. The Frank Archie hat. We could make the argument. Well, we can make the argument, and I know this for sure, is that we, if you look at the uh, census data, the two, it's open public information. And rather than say, you know, we can say that we're targeting the communities based on income. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's appropriate for this grant, maybe that, that we're selecting the location of where we're trying to transport from by choosing, you know, transport from Maimon and Williams or someplace near that to a different trail in order to facilitate people in a, a higher density, lower income part of town based on census data to a different part of town where there's open space and trails. Yeah, we could do that. And then using that as a launching into expanding the name in Williams trail to include a wooded section. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that that could possibly sell. Yeah, I guess my, my whole point that was just that is it, how do we say we're, you know, it's weird. Like, how are we, we're, are we only going to reach out to minority communities? You know, how do you, you know, I don't know what it's kind of an odd situation, but if we just say, we're just, we're doing this to, target a geographic location that by public census data shows that there's there it's a lower well, I mean, average annual income well, Mark, Mark, I think it's fine I think we're just in the neighborhood we know that we it's a densely pop we already we already said we're targeting densely populated right okay. and yeah I just I'm always a little concerned about like how 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 that's positioned and we're you know just yeah. like how are we doing you know it's nice that they they're saying they want to serve underserved communities but then you might get into some sensitive areas about how you pick and choose, right? I'm just trying to show that we're trying to be more sort of egalitarian and and public data based. That's all. Yeah, Maybe it's not necessary. Have... Maybe I'm being overly concerned. No, I I agree with you. We the good news is is because of the local health assessment, we have all that data on the area at least surrounding Neiman Williams Park. But we have like what's the density, what's the population density differences, what's the income differences, and what we have found is that there's a much more there's much higher population density in ward where the name and Williams is wards four and five versus where six mile run is, and that the income difference is huge. And the average life expectancy difference is there. So we have the data that we can support it. Um, and this way it's like we're targeting the area based on you know, uh, documented demographics and geography, less open space available, and that's how we're we're going to do it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that we just need to yeah reach out, or I'll see if I can get a contact at Lincoln Gardens Baptist Church. Okay. So should I submit? I mean, this is what you're looking at is on the screen. This is all I have to submit. It's like easy. You know, what will it serve? contact information and then briefly summarize how you will use the grant funding. A detailed itemization is not necessary. Okay, and, well then Vanessa's yeah. Vanessa's idea is perfect for that. Yeah. And, and then it's we'll just, just use that and I, but I'll still obviously we want to get this uh, idea rolling sooner so we know which direction yeah. we're pursuing. So I'll I'll contact somebody at the food bank and ask if they have a contact at Lincoln Gardens. Okay, Actually, so I uh, guess my question is, should I submit? Unless somebody else has one, sounds like somebody's piping up. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, my uh, I, I just thought of an idea. Um, Vanessa, during the last National Trails Day, I believe it was, were you able to connect with uh, friends from, uh, I, I believe that our organization was called Outdoor Afro? 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That that was at um I think that was at the Juneteenth celebration in New Brunswick. They had a table there and I was speaking with them. Um yes, I haven't heard from them since. Okay. Um I know that they had the woman who was actually the leader of that group had actually been on a wait list for one of Chuck's hikes for uh and so um but I could I could we could look them up online. I know there's a, they have their own website and uh and and contact them too yeah yeah and I, I feel like i've seen something about they're part of a greater organization right and they may have had some publicity in the last few months um or or some type of grant um with like rei or something uh but anyway if they are an organization that does operate locally maybe it's something they wanted to partner on for this specific grant um if we would consider them underrepresented in this yeah. Um, in this area, my other idea is, you know, considering the demographics and, and how to, uh, work with local organizations that may be interested within specific neighborhoods, you know, possibly the school district and perhaps Pine Grove Manor school, uh, just based on where it is and what the demographics are like there. Oh, right. Yes. That's a good point too. Hillcrest is right there as well. Hmm. I like it. All right, well, how about this? I'll submit the grant application, which is very simple, and I'll make it very basic, like very not vague, but I'll make it, you know, enough to get us in there. And then the it says that the um, detailed, you know, budget and um, what we're going to do that day is due on May 1st. So I can put it on our next agenda and we can like really hash it out then if that works. And then in the meantime, um, Mark, if you can reach out and see if you can get that contact and if Vanessa, you have the other contact that the, that what Chris is talking about, we can like get that all going for May. I mean, uh, March. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and find some. Someone okay. I think, I, I think what I, the women I met were from, I think it was from, I think it was called Girl Trek. Okay. Um, yeah, and it is, it's, it's for, it's for black women. Right. Um, but I'll, I'll keep digging to see if I could find more. Okay. Yeah, the good thing is next month is only March. So we really have March and April to hash it out as long as I get the application in. Um, so maybe if, if you guys are good with it and you want me to submit, it, I think maybe Vanessa, if we had a motion, that would be good. So I can, you know, use that to. Get sure. It. Okay. So Tara, we're looking for a motion um, to approve the application for um for the national trails day micro grant yes or for both or for both of the grants um no we already did one i think last time so okay. just for the micro grant yep Got okay a um can i have a motion um to submit an application for the national trails day micro grant program for you know for the uh, fifteen hundred dollars that we discussed i make a motion to apply for the uh, trails grant for National Trails Day to promote transportation for underserved communities to t participate in our National Trails Day event. Perfect. Second. Uh, second. With her. Um. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay. Unanimous. Okay, awesome. Okay. Um, it is 8.53, so we have about seven minutes. All um, right. The, uh, the next item we have is the Memorial Bench Tree Program. Oh, so maybe we can table this till next time, but basically okay. uh, I found it, well, I shouldn't say I found, I was sent information by one of our environmental commissioners. She found information about the tribute bench and living legacy tree program that's done through Somerset County Park Commission. And I thought maybe we could use that as kind of a template for our tribute bench and, and legacy program. But the basic gist of it is that they charge, it's a $3,000 fee. And that includes the bench and the lifetime maintenance of the bench. It also is the same for trees. So that was one thing that I found to be a little interesting and I have to do some more digging on, but um, maybe we can talk about that at the next meeting since we're kind of running a little late. Okay. okay. 
Um, moving on to old business, um, trail walks and events. Uh, we did have um, Molly had her um, Girl Scout hike. She presented her guidebook to every participant. Oh. Um, we had about 30 people there. Wow. And, nice. Um, yeah, so she's she made great strides toward her gold award, her Girl Scout gold award, the highest award um, for Girl Scouts. And um, yeah, and then she's also going to make extra books available, her trail guide books at REI. Yeah, and wow. um, also going to have, um, you know, it posted, we'll have a link posted on the township website. Oh, great. I, know, um, I think, I think I, if I didn't email you about that, Tara, I meant to. <laughs> No, that's um, I figured we would. So yeah, that works. Okay. okay. Um, so yeah, so that was uh it was nice, very nice. Awesome. That's um, great. And I think that, you know, that's the that's the only hike we've had since our last meeting. Um the next item on the agenda is the replacement benches that were installed. Yes, that's really the uh that's the update. The replacement benches have been installed. Did I send you all the locations? I think I did. Uh, uh, we got that information. Diana and I went out this morning to, to look for these benches. And uh, at Gregstown, of course, can't walk that far and there's hunting going on. Uh, but uh, looking at from binoculars, it looks like the sunset bench was not installed. The bench leading up to the sunset bench seems to be in a rather odd location. Uh, I had observed a couple of weeks ago, uh, public works app uh, with a truck uh, down the road as you as you get to the parking lot. Uh, looked like they were installing a bench, but I could not see it even with a spotting scope. Uh, but the bench at uh, Bunker Hill Road is installed. I took photographs of it. Uh, and the bench at Negri Napoti has been installed. But huh. uh, I, don't, I don't know, uh, like I say, it doesn't look to me like a sunset bench has been installed. And none of the benches that have been installed have any gravel around them or whatever. But you know, maybe it's a work in progress. Uh, and so, but, huh. uh, so yeah, because the I the email I sent you or what I sent everyone is what I got. So it's one of four. And the first priority is the memorial bench of John Clyde. Second is the bench near the kiosk at Negrina Pody. Third is the one on the yellow trail at Bunker Hill Natural Area, and then the remainder to of the first lot to be planted at to be planted to be replaced at John Clyde. And then this map they sent it looks like they replaced it, but you're saying you didn't see it there. Uh, no, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't see huh. it uh, and we could not see your priority 1 bench, which we call the sunset bench. Yeah, uh, but uh, it's you know, there. Huh. Is over Saturday, Saturday's the last day of hunting yeah. uh, hmm. and maybe somebody can go out and take a look and confirm that. Okay. But, yeah. But, uh, 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 confirm it for both of those 2 benches at Griggstown. I wow. will. Yeah, because he actually just sent me an email again this morning that said, okay, everything's done now. So, okay, well, I'll follow up. Sure yep. Okay, I'll follow up. And, Chuck, and Chuck's bringing up, like, and we had talked about the, um, we're asking for them to put like a foundation underneath, yeah. like, 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 whether there'd be weed, that weed um, blocker, um, and then have some type of a surface there. Um, so grass wasn't growing to avoid the damaging of the benches from the mowing. And I did um, say that, but but Chuck, you're saying you didn't see any any of that there. Anything like that. Okay, I will add it to my list for Tuesday. So Tara, just a quick question. What what do you need regarding the benches at Negri? Because I have photographs of what needs to re be replaced, and I can also point it out on the map, which I thought I had done. But what what do you need from me? Because some of them, I mean, they're in terrible shape. They're lying on the ground. And... If you have photographs, basically, if you have photographs and you want to put it on a map, that's really all I need. I mean, we're going to order more benches. I don't know how long that's going to take, oh, okay. but 
you know, yeah. So do, if you get me that, that would be excellent. Um, you know, and I can just basically give them to Carl. And as we can get benches in, we can start replacing them. Okay. Okay. Um, Tara, did you want to give the local health assessment action plan update or you want to save yeah, that? We can save it. Yeah, there's really nothing major. Um, the GPS trail mapping update, paint nothing place. Nothing major. No. Nope. And then the last part we have is updates on trail conditions um, for from us. Um, I do not have any updates. Sadly, I do not either. Um, just a quick on Griggstown, they had a lot of people are getting quite creative and there are low lying areas where there's a lot of water and people are taking branches and kind of making their own little paths over these wet areas. Which is rather ingenious, but it's going to be a problem when it's time to mow. Got it. Yeah. So I don't know quite what we're going to do about that. I mean, I use that to forge <laughs> a couple of times in Griggstown because everything was so wet. And they have these branches right next to each other, like a little bridge, like a little path. Huh. Or I mean, where where Griggstown at Emory? What? That was in Griggstown. Um, it was by the sunset bench, actually. Really? And then in the field that you have to, if you go to your right and go up and around one of those other loops before you get to the sunset bench, um, they also had in between two areas put in a nice wooden, these wooden branches. So I don't know who's doing it. You and it doesn't that. seem like they're breaking branches to do it. Seems like they're just utilizing what they find in nature. Stuff, yeah. So it's it's kind of it's a clever solution because some of those areas are so wet. Yeah. But um, so that was kind of clever. But it's going to be that, a problem if we mow. That brings in another issue: is that uh, public is supposed to be ex excluded from that area during firearm season, and yet people That's are out Sunday. there. You know, but uh, we see people out there all the time uh, yeah. during firearm season, uh, which. Uh, I've got several opinions about that, but uh, it, it also uh, motivates me to bring up uh, that uh, farm season will be over uh, on Sunday, and we need to have these dated signs that are at the entrances to oh, Griggstown yes. and Negri Nipoti, and uh, also Bunker Hill Road uh, areas. Uh, yeah. And I don't believe, uh, uh, Vanessa, is there also a, a signs at the uh, Middlebush Road entrance to that trail area? I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Uh, but uh, no, yeah, it needs sure. to be taken down after, after hunting season. And I'm quite willing to go out next week and start removing them and taking them over to the sign shop. Uh, I have no confidence that public works will be doing this anytime soon. And actually, the last time I talked to Carl uh, about this, uh, he was quite dismissive and uh, uh, basically is, uh, I'm too big to be bothered and, and uh, uh, you know, sure. we'll, we'll take it down when we damn well please. So, anyway, my intention is to take them down if I, don't, if I see them up uh, and, and, and remove them. And and take them to the sign shop. So Tara, Tara, there's there's not a problem with us volunteering and and doing that on our own if we wanted to, correct? No, there's not. I mean, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, I wasn't aware, Chuck, that you had talked to him, but you can let me know at another point. Um, Actually, this was a year ago, and it was oh. one after our uh, hunting season was over. And it was just a confrontation in the parking lot, and and. Hey and Chuck, I think maybe this could be saved better for offline. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that, Vanessa. <laughs> I understand. Um. Okay. So, yeah, and I think Tara, maybe we can uh, let's add to our another agenda for us to just talking about the trails, like wet spots. I think for us to have a further discussion, you know, I was able to do some volunteer work on the trails at Six Mile Run with the JORBA, the Jersey Off-Road Bike Association, just mm -hmm. a week or two ago. And, you know, and there's a lot of techniques. There's a lot of techniques to 
have you know areas that get you know, wet to kind of have them spill off to put little dishes off to the sides or to mound up certain areas and okay. um, that's something that uh, we can discuss further and, and figure out how maybe we can um, use some of those uh, established practices on our trails okay I, I can send photographs of what i saw at Grigstown. yeah that would be great Thank yeah, you. And I think going back to what Chuck was talking about before with those bog bog boards, but you know, like there are different things yeah. that we can that we can do that I think um, would be easier for mowing around and things like that, um, and uh, good for the I, land as well. I know we're almost out of time, but I quickly want to raise this again because I don't want to get lost in the sauce. But I did bring up last time, and I sent photographs for everyone to take a look at for the the motorized vehicles that were on Negri. Oh and yeah, where they, were, where they were coming in and the ruts they were leaving in the road. And we had talked a little bit. I don't I, I don't want to belabor it now because it's it's after nine. But I just think we need to add it to the next agenda about what ordinance or what we need to do about that because if we don't stay on top of these things as trail stewards, um, we're going to regret it. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Okay. Um, any other trail updates? No, the only update I have just a real quick 1 is that the, um, the teacher from Thomas Edison energy smart school, Jignasha Patel. Um, she did send in her information. She was interested in becoming a member of the trails committee. So I sent it to the mayor and. Anne Marie McCarthy, and I believe, I believe she's on for appointment for the upcoming meeting. So if she is, then she'll be with us in March. Great. Great. Um, and Tara, I think you already shared with me her contact information. Right? I think I did. I can send it again if you want. Yeah, well, after she's appointed, I, you know, if I, yeah. I'm happy to reach out to her before our meeting. Just yeah, to, that would be great. Welcome her. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much. <laughs> um, can we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? All right. Thank you all so much for your time and all your work. This is a really productive meeting. We have a lot to show for it. So thank you. Yeah.